and welcome to Faith on Film, a program designed to keep you informed on everything that's happening in the world of faith and family entertainment. I'm so sad because today Holly couldn't join me. She's extremely busy with holidays coming on and her working over at Capernaum Studios. They've got a lot going on over there. Uh, but I still have a great show that I'm going to do the best to, uh, to again keep you informed and hopefully keep you entertained. I've got a great guest today. Uh, Josh Murray, I've known for, my goodness, maybe, I don't know, 14, 15 years. I met him at the uh, Gideon Christian Film Festival, uh, and I have followed his career. Uh, now, one thing about Josh is most of the movies, at least the ones that I've seen, are all either action or suspense or thriller type movies, but he's kind of a little different. Now, the movies that I've seen him uh, in the past has been, of course, The Reliant with Kevin Sorbo. That's definitely an action film with a lot of, you know, shooting and escape, trying to escape the bad guys. Um, there's also a movie which I'm not aware of. I actually have not seen this movie. I'm going to have to check it out. It's called Limbo, uh, in which he plays the Dark Stranger. Ooh, boy, that does definitely sounds suspenseful, doesn't it? The Dark Stranger. Um, and of course, he's played in Killing Lincoln, which was executive produced by Ridley Scott and narrated by uh, Tom Hanks. Uh, Josh plays Assassin Lewis Powell. Assassin? Did you hear that right? Assassin Lewis Powell. So again, action films, thriller films, suspense films. Um, that movie, by the way, set a record in viewership on the National Geographic uh, Channel. But now he's gone romantic on me. That's right. He's gone romantic. I don't know what that's about, but uh, we're certainly going to find out today as I as I talk with him a bit and, and find out why he went romantic on us. Uh, in fact, why don't you take a look at the trailer so you can see what it is that I'm talking about. And when we come back, we'll delve into this romantic thing. Here's the trailer. Streaming on Fox Nation. I don't believe it. Abby. Can these old flames find holiday magic in the most Christmassy place on Earth? You always did know how to make me laugh. Christmas at the Greenbrier, streaming now, exclusively on Fox Nation. Josh, welcome to Faith on Film. What is going on here? <laughs> I'm throwing you a curveball. Got to keep you guessing, Isaac. Uh, definitely. Now you you know you've gone from all these roles that I'm pretty familiar with you on, and you've gone romantic on me. Now I do have a confession. Okay, I have a confession to make to you. I'm not your typical male. No. I actually love these uh, holiday rom coms. I probably watch at least thirty or so every Christmas season. So you you uh, you have hit a chord here with me. But tell me all about it. Well, How in the world this happened. I um I actually did uh, I did kind of a, a more the typical like thriller uh, lifetime role um, with some of these guys uh, last year it was and um, they also do a lot of more like hallmarky kind of films and um, they asked me to audition for this Christmas one this summer. And <clears throat> I was actually at a wedding at the time. Um, and so I almost didn't didn't have time to squeeze it in, but uh, I, I grabbed my cell phone and looked over some sides and sent them a, a take of it um, just in a little corner of the house with my wife. And uh, um, it was, I was actually the director's first choice. So he, he liked, he liked my take on Ben and uh, they asked, mm. asked me to do it. And I had never, uh, never even heard of the Greenbrier. Strangely enough, it's kind of a famous resort, but uh, right. uh, it, was, it was all new, new to me. And, and uh, shortly thereafter, I was on a plane to West Virginia. Huh. So tell me what the story is all about. Yeah. So um, it, it, the film is centers around uh, a, a character named Abby um, played by Alicia Lewis. Um, uh, sorry, Alicia Lee Willis and uh, and uh, a character named Ben, um, who is a retired football player. And he goes back to his hometown in West Virginia uh, for the holidays to visit the Greenbrier. And um, it turns out his old flame, his high school sweetheart, Abby, is uh, working there. And so they run into each other by surprise and um, have the opportunity to kind of rekindle things. Um, and uh, it's a lot about, you know, second chances, really a oh. big theme in the film. Okay. Now, was it difficult for you uh, to go from this dark stranger character to a romantic uh, guy? Well, you know, um, in some ways it was. Uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> obviously, um, 
you know, these some of these these intense, dark, uh, violent characters are are not really a reflection of who I am. But it is something that I'm, uh, you know, a range or or a uh, an energy I'm used to portraying in film, um, and I haven't had a lot of experience doing these kinds of of characters. Um, I think a lot of times people assume that the more intense, dramatic, like emotionally rough roles are much harder. And in some ways for maybe a lot of people, they are. Um, but for me, I've always kind of thought of these, these kinds of roles where uh, people are so happy and, and up and uh, positive all the time <laughs> is, is more challenging. Uh, to me, because, um, you know, from where I was coming from, especially, you know, earlier in my life, like that just wasn't my experience of life. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's partly just a, a kind of an outflow of just my development as a person and, and the healing that I've gone through, um, that I have kind of the capacity to, to, to play in those colors of, of more the lightheartedness. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's not like it's replacing, um, the other strengths or interests I have in film, but uh, mm -hmm. it's as an actor, it's great to be able to stretch yourself in different directions. It's great to be able to um, to play with uh, different parts of the sandbox, if you will. Um, and uh, I, if nothing else, uh, my mom is really, really happy that I did this movie. She's been complaining for years that I never played a nice guy. <laughs> uh, now you said something right now that caught my attention. You talked about your own personal healing. Are you able to share? what you're referring to there yeah sure um mm -hmm. i um kind of initially came into acting uh years and years ago um partly out of partly out of looking for an outlet because of the chronic health issues i was dealing with and also partly because um i wanted to just just uncover or, or figure out some things um with myself um i was in, in a dark place uh, uh, for, for many years, um, dealing with, uh, chronic pain and depression. And, um, it was, it was an outlet, but it was also like a, a path of self-discovery. Um, and, uh, initially, um, you know, I, the only thing that I really felt authentic in was, was playing, you know, more turbulent characters, um, uh, because there was just so much going on inside of me. Um, and it was, it, it wasn't any one, you know, particular moment, but it was a very gradual process over many years of pursuing, uh, healing, transformation, self-discovery, um, reflection and, and, uh, and really just shifting my beliefs, you know, a little bit over time, um, and, and really having a, a different relationship to my heart, different relationship to my emotions over the, the course of this journey that, that's really led me to a place where, um, I have a lot of a lot more openness and a lot more freedom mm -hmm. uh, emotionally to be able to, like I said, to play a role where you know a, you know people are predominantly you know living in a space of of enjoyment and happiness. And you know this film is not all like butterflies and, and, and rainbows either. I mean, th there's real issues that they're uh -huh. dealing with. There's real heartache and there's real struggle. Um, but it's it's coming from a place. Uh, overall, it's coming from a tone and perspective of more right. hopeful, and joyful, you know, living. So, right now, you mentioned you were married. Uh, I believe I saw that on Facebook at some point. Um, would you say that you are that same romantic type character in your own personal life? Does your wife think I'm, you're this I'm, romantic guy? <laughs> I have to, I have to bring her on to, 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 get, to get the, the real <laughs> scoop. But I would say she thinks so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a very romantic person. I, I, um, I think that I'm a very romantic person, you know, not just in, in terms of relationships that are romantic in life in general. Um, there was a period of time where I just got bitter, you know, in my teen years, um, I got really bitter just because of a lot of disappointments and heartbreaks and, and, and lack of connection in my life. And so I, I kind of unsubscribed from that because it, it felt like it was too much for me to handle. And so it just took, like I said, that long process of gradually coming to terms with, with life and, and healing and um, my relationship to God and to people to be able to, um, to, uh, to be my authentic self, which, which is, I am, I am a romantic. Um, so it, it, to me, you know, um, 
I, I don't think of it as being, you know, super romantic is, is cheesy. I think that when it's, when it's honest and when it's authentic, when it's, it's, um, it's coming from a truthful place, then it's real. I think that the only time when things become cheesy is when, um, when you're doing it for appearance, you know, for the form and not, uh, not actually. Yeah. Doing it. yeah. 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 So now you said that the movie itself kind of helped you with some of that healing. Would you also say that maybe being married now, maybe your wife has kind of helped you, uh, to bring you into that happier place? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, having a, a successful relationship and being able to actually commit to be able to get to a place of closeness and trust mm -hmm. to be able to commit to somebody in, in marriage um is a huge step and then even just being married uh is 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 a healing process it, and it's very much mm -hmm. it, seasons and stages because um there was a long time where i wasn't able to really have a a healthy relationship um because i wasn't at a level of healing where i could do that so it was it took a level of healing for me able, me to be able to um you know work things out with Catherine even when we first met I... uh -oh. trust initially and so there was a process even in our relationship of like healing you uh you you locked up there for a minute so what I'm going to do is you can uh, uh, just kind of pick it up a little bit. You locked, I can't even tell you exactly where you locked up, but. Uh, um, okay, you, sure. I'll, I'll just, roll back. So, just pick it up from there, Jan. Yeah. So there's, you know, seasons uh, and stages to healing. And uh, even in my relationship with Catherine, there was uh, some, some stages that I had to overcome in terms of healing to be able to move forward with her. And, um, you know, getting into a committed relationship, getting to the stage of, of marriage was a huge breakthrough and, and, and progress and maturing for me. Uh, and then once stepping into marriage, you know, it's been other levels and, and, and seasons of healing and, and moving forward too. So um, I think it's, you know, I think for everyone, it's a life journey. Well, I'm so happy to see you uh, happy like this. Uh, but also I really appreciate your being this open with our audience today and just kind of sharing all about your dark space and kind of, you know, your journey that you're taking now. It, uh, that's, that's very, very nice of you to be that open. Well, you know, Isaac, um, I, uh, I just got the news, um, that, uh, a, a, a friend from recent years, um, mm -hmm. passed away and committed suicide uh, oh, um, my goodness. the other day. And, uh, someone who was incredibly positive, and encouraging and upbeat every time that I saw him. And uh, part of, I think, part of the, the, the issue and the problem and also part of the difficulty in me uh, healing and coming to, 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 to terms um, with life really in the past was the fact that I just felt like no one understood me. I felt like there was no one I could talk to. I felt like there was no one um, that was really going through what I was going through. And that's a huge, a huge lie of the enemy. Um, that that we 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 assume that like we're unique in our problems, and so I I'm aware because of comments that I've heard from people, um, that which I think is absurd, but but it is people's perceptions sometimes who just know me now in this stage of my life that I have it all together and. Um, you know, that life comes easy for me or I live the charm life or I'm super lucky or whatever. And, um, I, I, I know for a fact that, that I, in the past, um, I was, uh, in worse shape than, than the average person for sure. I, I don't know where I fall on the, on the spectrum, but, hmm. um, I intentionally from time to time share these things because I know there's people who yeah. sometimes look at other people's happiness and, and it's almost like a, a condemnation of their life. Um, and, and I don't project this fake, you know, uh, imaginary mm -hmm. world on social media or what have you. Um, like I genuinely now, for the most part, I, I, I live out of gratitude and joy yeah. and enjoyment of life. And, and I live, you know, overcoming obstacles. I face challenges, but I also don't, part of my healing and health is I don't really focus on the setbacks and disappointments, you know, I deal with them when they come up and I move forward. Um, but I wasn't always like that. And so from time to time, I, I do like to share 
um, about, you know, the crap and the, 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 sure. the junk that I've been through because I want people to know, like, this didn't just come naturally. This came from battling, yeah. like, hard, painful battles day in and day out, year after year to get to this place. And it doesn't just, time doesn't heal all wounds, you know? Just waiting for time to pass does not fix anything. Repressing, yeah. ignoring, avoiding, forgetting about things does not fix anything. It was confronting things. And um, that's part of my purpose, you know, as an artist, as an actor, as a person. Sure. Uh, it's to help people to recognize, you know, that's, that, that you have a soul and you, and you, have, to, you have to contend for it. You have to deal with it. And, and even if you have religion, you know, even if you have all the right answers, mm-hmm. like if they're just in your head, they're not going to fix things. Well, so what would you, what would be your, your uh, recommendation then if somebody is, is kind of going through this besides starring well, in a romantic comedy movie? <laughs> well, you know, for, for me, acting has been a, a pathway and a medium um, and a motivation. Uh, it's been uh, kind of a channel for, for my, my journey and my healing. You know, for other people, it might be something completely different. Um, but, uh, the, the you know the underlying principle is the same and that is um that uh the the things that the things that we feel are not the problem in and of themselves they are only messengers um and so a lot of times when people like to treat the symptoms of i have depression i have anxiety i have heartache i have you know whatever these these feelings are let me figure out a way to fix them and it's not the feelings that are the problem. The feelings are only a symptom or a reflection or really an indication of something that needs to be dealt with. And so um, we have to really get to the root of what is it that we're believing in our heart of hearts um, that is causing us to interpret life and to experience life in this way that is painful. Um, and, and only when we arrive at, at true peace and, and healing and freedom um, to be able to move, move beyond that. Um, have we, have we gotten to the reason for the pain and the pain is always there for a reason. The pain is not the problem. Right. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I, this, this was not what I thought the program was going to be dealing with. I thought we're going to talk about this romantic comedy. You see it right back here, uh, <laughs> Christmas at the Greenbrier. Uh, but you know what? God always has something in mind. And, and I just, I just feel like what you've been sharing could be something that could be very uh, useful to some of our viewers because if you know they might be going through this same kind of thing and you're sharing your story and you're sharing uh, you know your heart I think is going to be very important in fact we were only going to go we'll go on for about uh, you know 10 12 minutes or so and we've been in this for a while and I think we might just end up with an entire show here um, and so I really appreciate you you doing this uh, but tell me What's in store uh, for your future now? Wow. wow. That's a, that's a well, big question. <laughs> that's a big question. That's uh, a big question. Well, um, right right now, um, at the moment, um, you know, I'm, I'm promoting the, the Christmas film. And mm-hmm. uh, just to touch to touch briefly on it, I mean, obviously, it's, it's out now. It's streaming. Right. Um, people can watch it th- this Christmas. Um, I've been really appreciative of just so much feedback from people. Um, even people who, yeah. you know, maybe they, they, it's not their typical movie, but you know, they, it brought a smile to their face. Um, they watched it with their family. They, they enjoyed it. Um, which is great to hear. And, you know, it, it, it is more of a fun and lighthearted film. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think there's something, there's a theme in there, like I said, about second chances, um, that has, that has some, some, some depth and some meaning to it. And, and to me, you know, the thing about second chances is that, when we have a second chance, it means that we've already failed or we've already experienced mm. disappointment. Mm-hmm. And uh, part of what my character has been is experiencing in the film is that um, he's, his fear is fear of, of taking that chance, um, fear of failing again, fear of it falling apart. And, and I think the character of Abby as well, um, she's had love in the past and lost it repeatedly. And uh, there's a lot of fear of, of taking that risk. And so um, that's, a, that's a theme that, that really stood out to me in the film. And, and I think uh, it's, it's uh, something I always look for in every film is like, what is, this, what is the, um, 
what is the root of this? What is the, not just the message, but what's the truth? What's the kernel of truth in this story? Um, because that's what stories ultimately are doing. It's conveying truth about life. Do, do you think um, uh, that this will be kind of your, your new genre? Are you going to, you think you'll, you might be doing more of these rom-coms type of movies? Or are you going to go back to being the dark stranger? <laughs> so I just, I just wrapped on another film. Uh -huh. um, which I can't talk too much about because it's pretty, right. it's pretty under wraps still, but uh, it's based on a true story. Uh, it's based on a true story. It's a, it's another, it's kind of a corporate legal thriller, um, uh -huh. but it's another an intense one. It's based on a true story, but it's a, it's a pretty, it, mm -hmm. a pretty dark story. Um, it's some, some heavy material. Um, and, and the character I play um, is, is, is more uh, on that more somber tone. Um, and uh, I, I'm, expecting that that film will probably be it be announced maybe maybe in the summertime um so that that is something i'm, I'm looking forward to coming out as well and uh, definitely I, i shifted back i kind of on the other side of the spectrum i have gotten some inquiries already about uh some some films for next year nothing nothing uh confirmed but some stuff on both sides of the spectrum you know opportunities um that are more on this uh rom-com tone and others that are more in that heavy dramatic mode. so um for me as an actor i love the idea of def defying people's uh, expectations and limitations and, and shoeboxing or pigeonholing me into anything um i like the variety hmm. all right uh, so if people want to just kind of keep up with what you're doing uh how would they do that do you have a website do you have a i'm sure you got a facebook page because i follow that one but uh, what's the best way to just kind of follow you Well, if you're on Instagram, uh, that's definitely the best way to keep up with me. That's where I, I'm active primarily, uh, Josh Murray Actor on Instagram. But you can find me on the same handle, Josh Murray Actor, on Facebook, Twitter, um, and uh, you know, get get updates with what I'm doing there as well. All righty. So, how long you've been married, by the way? Uh, we just celebrated our first uh, one year anniversary a couple months ago. Oh, wow. Oh, that is so cool. I just recently celebrated 43, 40. Oh, my goodness. If my wife finds out that I don't remember how many years she's going to have my height. 40, 40, 42, I think. 42 or 43. Somewhere's around there. Okay. 42 and a half. Yeah, 42 and a half. Well, listen. Congratulations, uh, man. That's, that's a quite an accomplishment today. Thank you. Yeah, yes, it is. You know, and... Uh, Uh, I, I, it's sad to see how many uh, marriages end, even in the Christian space, even even amongst Christians now. The the divorce rate is just so high. Uh, so no, definitely. Yeah. You know, but but we come from, we both come from a long line of long married people. You know, my parents still alive, by the way, and I think they've been uh, married now for let me see what I'm sixty four. So they've been married about almost sixty six years. Wow, that's, that's a long time. It's a long time. It's a great, it's a great legacy. You know, there's, yeah. there's uh, loyalty and commitment are great virtues. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, thank you again uh, for taking time to, to just kind of share with us uh, again your heart and and uh, uh, just the real your 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 real personal story here. Uh, but also uh, the the movie now. The movie again is Christmas at the at the Greenbrier, right? And it's available on Fox Nation. Uh, so just go look for it and go look for a lot of other movies uh, done by, by Josh he's, he's got some great movies uh, so you want to you find those check them out they're probably streaming all over the place right? you got it you got it man All right, man thank you and have a great Christmas Merry Christmas God bless well the movie is Christmas at the Greenbrier and you can watch it uh, streaming on uh, Fox Nation. Now, Fox Nation is, of course, a streaming uh, service, a subscription streaming service. So if you have Fox Nation, you can just look for Christmas at the Greenbrier and watch it then. Or if you're not, I believe they have a free trial that you can check it out. So you can subscribe to it for free, uh, watch the movie, and then if you don't want to keep the subscription, just, uh, just cancel it. But at least you get to watch the movie. Now, of course, if you like what else they have there at Fox Nation, then you can always remain with your subscription. Now, this uh, this program took a little bit of a different turn than, than I had intended, actually, that I had in mind. I thought we were just going to talk about uh, a wonderful Christmas uh, romantic comedy that Josh was involved in. Uh, but, of course, it kind of took that different turn of 
um, just getting to find out uh, about his personal life a little bit. And I'm so grateful for him that he was able to be that transparent and that vulnerable. Uh, I know that's difficult for uh, for actors to, to be able to just be that vulnerable and, and just share with you their personal life. Uh, but I believe Josh uh, kind of really understood that there was someone out there that maybe needed to hear this. Uh, so I know during Christmas time, it's very difficult for a lot of people uh, some of them perhaps lost their loved one uh, just recently, and this will be their first Christmas without their loved one, and that can be that can be a difficult time. Uh, or maybe they uh, lost their loved one several years ago, and every Christmas they're just reminded that uh, they don't have their loved one with them anymore. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to encourage you. Uh, hopefully, this program actually was a, a an inspiration to you, uh, just to know that you're not alone. You know, God cares for you. Uh, he, he's there for you. So you're not really alone. Um, so if you're going through that, I, I hope, number one, that this program really uh, inspired you and blessed your heart, uh, but that it also just made you understand and realize that, uh, that there is hope. Uh, now, if this is not you, but you know someone perhaps that uh, that has lost a loved one recently or lost him during during the season, um, and you know that they're uh, they're going through this, uh, maybe you can let them know about this program. Just uh, tell them to go. It's very simple. Tell them to go to youtube.com forward slash faith on film TV or forward slash at faith on film TV. That's youtube.com forward slash at faith on film TV. Uh, they can watch this program and, and perhaps this will also make an impact in their life. Um, and uh, the other thing is this is this is a challenge that I'm going to give to you. I know this program is supposed to just be to tell you all about the wonderful things happening in the faith and family entertainment. Uh, but again, today I think was a very special program. So I'm going to have a challenge for you. If you know someone who is going through this, who perhaps is, uh, is going through depression or who you know that this year will be alone, here's the challenge. Why don't you invite them to your place for Christmas? Invite them. If you're having a Christmas party, invite them to your Christmas party. If it's just you and your family, Invite them to join your family to be a part of this the, this Christmas season. Uh, that can be difficult, I know, but believe me, when you uh, when it's all over, you will feel great that you did this for someone. So there's the challenge for you. Uh, I hope uh, I hope you accept this challenge and uh, and make an impact in somebody's life. Well, I just want to remind you that you can write us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. We sure would love to hear from you. Let me know, by the way, that you watch this program specifically. Uh, and of course, you can always follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Faith on Film TV. That's at Faith on Film TV. And again, I reiterate, check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash at Faith on Film TV. And while you're there, just hit that little subscribe button. That way you'll know what new programs are coming your way. All right. Well, it's not Christmas yet, but we're certainly in that Christmas season now. So I, uh, I don't know if I should wish you a Merry Christmas yet. We will have a Merry Christmas program, but Merry Christmas anyway. <laughs>